Hi guys, I am Srishti and I am back with another current affair for you. So today we will be discussing about the angel tax and the angel investment. If you like my video then do subscribe to our channel for regular updates. You will definitely find informational content over here. So starting with the angel tax and angel investment. So today we will be covering the difference between angel investors, venture capitalist and private equity. Next we are going to see that what is angel tax, who is an angel investor and how to avail the exemption from angel tax and lastly we will be seeing merits and demerits of the angel tax. So starting with our first topic, so as we all know that the government is trying to promote startups and it is trying to create a entrepreneurial spirit in our country. but rules such as angel tax are curbing their limits to reach heights but the reason behind which the government has introduced this tax is a valid one but it lacks certain evidences or the premises behind it so i'll be discussing all of these in detail so firstly we'll be seeing that who is an angel investor so he's a person a wealthy individual who invests in his personal capacity or through a crowdfunding platform online. So we all know that what crowdfunding platform is. It is basically the internet websites which provide a way for a large number of people to invest in increments or funds in support of a person, project or a entity. So this is a crowdfunding platform. So it basically builds an angel network. So there are many angel network sites like local circles like let's venture so these are the internet websites for the angel investors and then they invest in the early startups depending upon their personal liking along with their expertise and knowledge so in brief angel investor is a person who comes like an angel for a startup and he doesn't see anything but he totally invest based upon his personal liking and he comes with the advantage as an experience and knowledge. So we shall argue that venture capitalists and private equity are also same as the angel investors. They also bring in money for the startup. So how are they different? How are they three different from each other? So to understand this concept, Firstly, we know that angel investors invest in a startup. He doesn't see the revenue for a business. He just invest based upon his personal liking or a person or if he feels that that person should grow or that business should grow. So pre-revenue, note here the word pre-revenue. Before a company starts earning, angel investor comes in before that. Whereas in venture capitalist, it is also at the early stage but pre-profitability when a company has started to earn and venture capitalists see that there is a scope for this business to grow in the future. So this is where venture capitalists come in. Venture capitalists, we can also say that he is for the profit making business. So he invests in a startup who wish to expand but do not have access to equities market. So venture capitalists shortlist supposedly 10 startups out of which 8 fails and 2 are successful in the long run. So the profit if we talk about is that the profit these 2 will give will compensate the loss of these 8 failures of the startups. So venture capitalists make huge money and he exits from the business at a very correct time. Now if we talk about private equity then it comes in the mid to later stage when a company is profitable there is regular cash flows and private equity also comes in when a startup is facing some struggles. So to bring that startup back to its normal operations private equity enters. Now the type of investment angel investors invest their own personal funds in their personal capacity. So this is the equity and that is why it is safe because it is his own investments. Then we have venture capitalism, private equity. 
venture capital is equity and convertible debt and there are pooled in investments from various people here and private equity also equity with leverage so if a pe has limited funds that is private equity has limited funds and it wants to invest in suppose three companies so it distributes the limited funds to all the three companies so that these three companies are in a position to borrow to leverage further this is how pe works now the level of risk as we have already said that angel investors come at a founding stage the early bud stage wherein the company has not even started to earn so the chances of losing the money is very high because a angel investor does not know that whether the company will succeed or not because it haven't done any analysis for the profitability stage then so therefore the risk is extremely high then we have the venture capitalists have high risk because there are moderate chances of losing the money because he has done prior analysis and come into the business to invest when there is pre profitability stage and the private equity there is low chance of losing all the money and there is a moderate risk here so these are the examples of angel investors or venture capitalists and private equity so as we can see in the diagram here so first is the angel investors who is at the budding stage then we have the venture capitalist who is at the early stage of the business and then we have the private equity at a later or a mid stage of the startup now coming to our topic that is what is angel tax so we have seen that many startups have received the notice of paying angel tax so the word angel tax what does it mean and how does it function we will be seeing here now what is angel tax so it is a tax on the capital raised by the unlisted companies where the share price is seen in excess of the fair market of the share sold for example if there is a startup abc and and it has done its valuation at suppose 1 crore rupees so the valuation by the startup abc is 1 crore rupees for the the assessing officer from the tax department values this startup at suppose 25 lakh rupees so this difference of 75 lakhs is the excess valuation because based on the valuation there will be issue of shares and the share price so any share price which is in excess of the fair market value which the tax department thinks will be treated as the income from other sources for the startup and this will be taxed at a rate of 30% so this is what i have written here that the amount raised by a startup in excess of fair market value would be deemed as income from the sources and would be taxed at 30% so what is the purpose behind introducing this tax so the government of india wants to curb the problem of money laundering here under section 56 so what is problem of money laundering what do you mean by money laundering it is basically the concealment of the origins of illegally obtained money typically by means of involving foreign banks or legitimate business so we can say it that it is converting black money into white money so when anyone tries to convert their black money to into white money that is known as a process of money laundering so what do you mean by black money the money the source of which hasn't been disclosed to the tax department so this is known as the black money so we will be seeing here that section 56 what does it say so it says that if a company charges premium for its shares in excess of the fair market value of the shares so as i have already told you so that excess amount will be treated as the income from other sources and valuations so the process that the company is used to calculate their market value differs a lot from the method the government uses to calculate the same so a startup valuation is based on the rosy future projections assuming that the business will prosper over a long period of time 
but when the time comes and the assessing officer from the tax department comes to value this to impose tax the valuation as per him it doesn't matches the valuation done by the startup and as a result the tax authority value their business based on the figures actually received that is actually quoted by the startups so that excess value will be treated as the income and it will be taxed at 30% now we have the blanket exemption so earlier what happened was that the startups total investment including the amount which was given by the angel investor if that was up to rupees 10 crore the startups had the exemption so they doesn't have to pay the angel tax but now this exemption of 10 crores has been incre- increased to 25 crores so every startup whose total investment does not exceed rupees 25 crore and this 25 crore includes the investment made by the angel investor so such a startup will get immunity from the taxation now coming to the accredited or the genuine investors that is the angel investors who are considered as the accredited or genuine investor so they could invest any amount but that amount should be in alignment with his net worth so the tax authorities main purpose is to see the source of income and that no one is doing money laundering here so let me take the cases of two people suppose a and b so a has his net worth rupees 1 crore and if he invest rupees say 90 lakhs and another person b has a net worth of say 20 crore and he invest rupees 2 crore so tax department says that a person who is an angel investor could be considered as a genuine investor if the amount that he is investing that is a rupees 2 crores then his net worth should be at least 10 times of that but here in case of a he is not a genuine investor whereas in case of b he is a genuine investor now the tax department the government of india has given many kind of relaxations so the first one is that it has redefined the definition of startup so earlier a company was considered to be a startup for up to 7 years from its incorporation but now the limit has raised from 7 years to 10 years so what does this mean so this allows the other startup to get an exemption from the income tax laws for 3 more years so this startup could now be availing the benefit of tax exemption for 3 more years and also the upper limit for the turnover of tax exempt startups has been increased from 25 crores earlier to rupees 100 crore so the entity here will remain a startup if it does not experience a turnover of more than 100 crore in any of the financial year so this allows a startup to grow even more now for being eligible for exemption there are certain restrictions also for a startup it should not invest in any immovable property transport vehicles above rupees 10 lakhs loans and advances and capital contribution to other entities and some other assets except in the ordinary course of business so this point we will be discussing at a later stage and this is very important related to mergers and acquisitions also dpiit which is department for promotion of industry and internal trade has recognized that if there is a private limited company so it will be considered as a startup if it is not investing in specific asset classes so for registration to avail the exemption a startup have to provide account details return of income for the last 3 years and also the angel investors who have invested in such startup also have to furnish their details regarding their net worth and return of income so this is basically a kind of problem because there is excess scrutiny over here for the angel investors because now they have to disclose everything to the tax department they faces serious scrutiny also for a startup the capital now that it can get is limited so we will be discussing this point in a while 
Now we shall be discussing that who can be an angel investor. Earlier we have read that what is a startup and the new definition for the startup and we have done the analysis also. We have studied what angel tax is and what is the purpose behind introducing angel tax by the government. Now we shall be studying that who can be an angel investor. So any person who have a minimum net worth of 2 crore and average return income of not less than rupees 50 lakhs in the preceding 3 financial years. So this has a direct drawback because small investors which earlier used to provide their investment in a startup is now not included in the ambit of angel investors because the minimum net worth is rupees 2 crore and average return income of not less than 50 lakhs should be there in the preceding 3 financial years. So there is a direct hit on the small angel investors here. Now which investments fall under the ambit of angel tax? So as I have already told you that there were, there is scrutiny for the startups as well as for the angel investors and startups face shortage of capital now so this is the reason why because this angel tax is imposed only on the investments which are made by the resident investors so there is no scrutiny there is no angel tax for the investments made by the non-resident or the venture capital funds so it directly limits the indian angel investors and it does not limit the foreign angel investors so this is the direct drawback here now we shall be studying how to avail the exemption here so eligible startup they can request dip with applicable supporting documents so the application shall be forwarded to the cbdt so dip will forward the application to cbdt along with the attached documents and then CBDT has been mandated to accept or decline such an application within 45 days from the date of receipt. So this is the whole procedure which a eligible startup has to follow to avail exemption. Now moving on, what is the confusion? So there was a news regarding Travel Khanas and Baby Gogo's account that they have been frozen. So the money in the accounts was taken by the tax department. So everyone was furious, the startup community was furious as to how a tax department could do so without any prior notice. So here comes two sections which everyone gets confused of that is section 56.27b and another section is section 68. So section 56 to section 7b. I have already discussed with you that this relates to angel tax and any excess premium received by a startup in excess of the fair market value that will be considered as the income from the other sources and that will be taxed at 30%. So this is the angel tax. Now section 68 relates to the unexplained cash credits so if a person cannot prove its valuation its source of income under section 56 to 7b so that will be directly handled by section 68 which is for unexplained cash credits as a person cannot defend that where its source is and where the income is coming from now the recent changes which have been there is that starters which are raised funding post april 2016 so no tax has to be paid by them and for startups registered before april 2016 they have to fulfill the criteria to seek the exemption and i have already told you the criteria the amount of investments and the that which have been raised from 10 crore to 25 crore and the angel investor criteria that is of 2 crore and of not less than 50 lakh returned income. So these criteria have been met. So a startup is eligible to take the exemption. Now earlier I have talked about mergers and acquisitions. So this is what we are going to discuss now. So if a startup acquires another company or it merges with some of them. So this is not allowed because exemption is given for the use of funds in their own business. 
but it is not for them to become the angel investors so a startup can take the exemption for the use of funds which they have received in their business but the same funds if they are using them for the purpose of mergers and acquisitions then in this case the exemption will not be given to the startup even though the startup meets its criteria but for the startup the motive is growth and if a startup is growth oriented then it will choose growth strategy over the immunity and mnas are a part of growth strategy now we shall be discussing budget 2019 relaxation for startups that what it has said so relief from the angel tax so any startup or the investor who have applied for the exemption and they have given requisite declarations on their returns so they will not be subject to scrutiny under the angel tax on share valuations also non scrutiny of valuations by tax officials has been extended to startups and which get funding from category 2 alternative investment funds so before moving further let us look at this pie chart so 944 startups have given the request for exemption out of which 702 granted the request 39 were incomplete applications and 203 were returned or the revised request here now what are the categories of alternative investment funds so there are three categories category 1 includes all those investors who invest in startup or the early stage investments or the areas where the government is interested that is the areas for social e or economic developments now category 2 investors they are the investors who resorts to leverage or borrowing only for their day to day requirements and category 3 are the ones who employ diverse complex trading strategies and they employ leverage including through investment in listed or unlisted derivatives now we have already read that what is the purpose of angel tax to curb the money laundering and to identify the unexplained cash credits which is under section 68 now drawbacks of introducing angel tax we have done this simultaneously while explaining the concepts so to brief it up so earlier before this the number of angel investors were 1080 but now it has more than halved to 470 in 2018 startups are now starved of capital because many angel investors are now not interested because of the scrutiny by the government so in all the document all the way we have discussed that the premium which is charged above the fair market value that will be considered as the income from other sources and this is all to curb the problem of money laundering but then how does this premium proves that it is the black money so this is one of the drawbacks so for this that to check the source section 68 is there and the last drawback is that small indian investors are disincentivized because in the definition of angel investors that who can be an angel investor so he can be a person having net worth of 2 crore or return income of not less than 50 lakhs so these are the persons who are eligible to become the angel investors so the small indian investors are now disincentivized and also note the word indian here because angel tax is imposed only on the investments made by the indian residents no angel tax is imposed on the foreign investors or the foreign investment so with this we have understood the concept of angel tax and angel investment so in this document we have covered the difference between private equity venture capitalist and angel investors we have understood what angel tax is on what kind of investments does angel tax applies to what are the relaxations made by the government regarding the startups regarding the angel investors what is the angel tax percentage imposed and at, on what amount is it imposed we have understood the purpose behind it and the drawbacks so i hope you have understood this and do subscribe to our channel for regular updates if you like my video thank you